Okay, well, thank you. Got it, okay. So thank you guys for coming in tonight and thank you for signing up for this presentation. Um, it's gonna be about Mars and specifically Mars mechanics when it's about evolution of consciousness. Um, I'm gonna use a couple of sentences to present myself. I currently do evolutionary astrology and past life regressions. I'm trained under Patricia Walsh and I studied evolutionary astrology with Kim Marie and also Michael De Becker. So um, why Mars? <clears throat> I personally had a lot of issues with figuring out my Mars in my chart. And uh, I've noticed that a lot of people have the same issues and your questions actually tonight is the testimony for that as well. So why is it that we have such a problem realizing what this Mars is doing in our charts, meaning in our lives? So this is what I'm gonna try to shed light on and it's gonna be strictly within the confines Actually, they're not really confines, but within the uh, borderlines of the evolutionary astrology as taught by Jeffrey Wolf Green. Uh, we know that there is other astrologers that are also uh, claiming that they're doing evolutionary astrology, but just for the sake of this presentation, um, I want to make it clear that we're going to be looking at Mars from the perspective of evolutionary astrology through Jeffrey Wolf Green's Green. So... In this title, first, so Mars Mechanics and the Evolution of Consciousness, we have a couple of elements here. We have the consciousness and the evolution and then Mars. So what we know about consciousness is we can describe it as awareness, right? I mean, we have different awareness when we're at the age of seven and the age of 15, the age of 60, that's totally changing. And that's a normal consequence of life, or at least it should be. So during our living our lives, we are actually expanding and expanding our awareness of how the things work. Where are we standing within our own lives and within the lives of other people? What's our connection to other people? How are we connecting? How are we connecting to what we perceive to be source? So consciousness is ever expanding and that would be described as evolution, of course as opposed to involution, which is the case sometimes, of course. So where is Mars? What role Mars is playing into that whole thing? When we think about Mars, we think about action. There is no way we cannot think of anything like that. And so we know very well that after we're born, we don't stop acting. Whether it's gonna be acting or reacting, that's constantly happening. We're babies, we cry because we're hungry. We laugh when we feel good. So this continues throughout life. And before I go to the next slide, actually, I'm gonna touch a little bit on that metaphor that many people or many, many astrologers that are actually doing evolutionary astrology specifically within that paradigm are familiar with. And that's that wave in the ocean. Um, what is this a wave in the ocean? We know that the ocean is described as Pluto and Pluto in evolutionary astrology happens to be the soul. So whether this is the entire soul or this is this part of the soul that is actually engaged into this life because it needs to learn something specific in regards or certain areas of life, we don't know. But overall, we can say that the soul is equated to the ocean and then Mars is that wave that has the urge from the ocean to manifest itself. So I'm gonna bring this um, next slide and uh, I want to, for you to look at that. And I want you to look at it just, just staring at this screen and see those three pictures. Of course, when you look at them, you realize that there is something that connects them together. There is something similar within every each of them. You have the shooting sprout, the baby, the fetus that is forming in the womb, and then a pure energy. So we want to look at those symbols. Symbols are very important. They actually penetrate our censorship, mind censorship, and they work on a very deep level. 
So what is the common denominator between all those three pictures? We have a force that is deep within somewhere that is causing something to emerge. We can doubt whether or not the shooting sprout is aware of the seed or the fetus is aware of the <clears throat> sperm cell or a pure energy is aware of what exactly is the cause for the impulse to expand and to show itself, we, we don't know. But the common denominator within all this spectrum is those couple of words, impulse, instinct, emergence, action, reaction, initiation. Every time we try to initiate action, every time we're acting, there's an initiation. And also in order for the energy to provide, to show itself, to actually uh, express itself, there has to be an, a, that, that libidinal energy the action to happen, there has to be an energy, otherwise how it is going to happen. So there is primary force for primary brain. And ultimately there has to be a freedom for all this to um, show itself. So we want to keep this in mind when we're gonna be talking about Mars, especially Mars in the charts. So you can determine very deeply in your astrology. If you can listen to that for a while, this is Jeffrey Dean. That's the core issue, the determinant, the causal factor. The desires that emanate from that, with respect to your evolutionary requirements and desires, how they get instinctually acted out to the planet Mars by its own host and sign aspects. How they become instinctually active from where you have Aries located on the house cusp. And how they become instinctually active for the sign on your ascendant. So what we get there was that we actually there is no way we can imagine our life without the acting, right? Because the moment we start acting, the moment we start breathing, if we look at the electrocardio screen, we can see this line totally flat. So we're not there anymore. The actual wave has reached the shore. But when we're talking about Mars, we have to understand deep as much as we can that we're talking about instinctual response to a force that we are not aware of and that would be the soul. Why would that be? Well, when you think about it, Jeffrey Wolverine describes the Mars as a denser vibration of Pluto. So denser means you can see it when if it's not so dense, you can't see it. We cannot look and see where the soul is. We have no conscious understanding of our soul as much as we want to have some. So when we are talking about Pluto, we are talking about unconsciousness. So we're also talking about that Pluto, our soul, coming into this life and having all those desires that are based on the previous experiences. And all this is actually pushing and emanating from the soul and Mars is there that's picking it up. So if we're using that metaphor for the ocean and the wave, when the wave, start, wave starts forming, of course, the wave itself is not concerned with what's causing it to form, just the opposite. The wave has to expand by listening to that force. So there is a peak where the wave is absolutely distant from the flat um, level of the ocean. And then from then forward, it just follows this force. Eventually it breaks up and then it reaches the shore. So obviously every little droplet of water that was within that, that um, wave is going back to the ocean. And what is the difference though? Every little droplet from that wave actually carries the memory of that experience. And that is the most important part. So when we think about Mars, again, although there's a definition that is circling around that this is the conscious desires of the soul. 
we can doubt if that's exactly the case. As we've established, the soul is something that we're not totally consciously aware of. We can pick glances, glimpses through our dreams. We can do regression therapy. We can go into all kinds of deep experiences through plants or whatnot. But whether we are really going to be finding out what the soul is, really, in its entirety, it's doubtful. So hence, we're looking at those charts, myself including, and mine, and with clients, and I get the same complaints over and over again, not constantly, but they're very frequent. And here those are, I do not understand my Mars. I don't see how I'm acting out my Mars by house and sign. It's supposed to be conscious, acting out conscious desires. I don't think what astrology says about my Mars is correct. There is no way I'm consciously initiating what my Mars stands for. Well, that's disturbing because again, we know or we've been taught that this is actually conscious desires of the soul. But what's the problem? Well, one of the problems is that we cannot look at one planet in our chart, which is an expression of certain psychic energy as a singleton. The moment we start doing this, we're losing the whole grasp, the whole picture. So what we start doing is we're compartmentalizing our consciousness and there is no way we can grasp that function of ours as a singleton, as a fragment. We're doing the fragmentation. So you can look at that picture of Dali. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And then the other one also is by him on the left. And so it's almost like we are referring to those planets as little drawers within ourselves. Oh, this is my Mars talk. Oh, this is my Venus or this is my Pluto. That actually brings more fragmentalization and more misunderstanding of how those energies are working within our lives. So this is something that we should probably avoid doing. And I'm gonna talk about this later. The other thing that happens is by accepting that Mars is the conscious desires of the soul. We're actually setting ourselves as getting into some sort of mental conundrum. Why? Well, we know a lot of people are talking about Mars is the conscious desires of the soul and then Pluto is the unconscious desires of the soul. Well, right there, we have a huge split. Why? Can we assume that we have two separate groups of desires, ones that are unconscious and the other ones are conscious, that doesn't sound too much of a truth. It just it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's right. The other thing is Jeffrey Wolf Green says, and it doesn't need to be him to say it. I mean, we all can ponder on it and realize that that's true, that we're not consciously aware of the soul. And we also cannot be aware of our unconscious, otherwise we wouldn't have been unconscious. And yet at the same time, Mars, as an archetype, instinctually, what does instinctually mean? It means without forethought or a concept of what these desires are, is acting out the desires of the soul. So right there, we have this, I mean, you cannot just not pose the questions, do, do Mars actions turn into conscious once the instinctual actions cease? Or, if so, what happens to the Pluto placement in our chart? Does it, does it not get active or at one point it just dies out? I don't think that's the case. And I think that most of us will actually uh, testify that that's not the case. So how is this thing working then? We have unconscious soul with unconscious desires, but then Mars becomes conscious desires of the soul. So here is what we can do in order to figure this one out. And maybe the function that our Mars plays in our charts slash our lives will become a little bit more clear. So the fragmentation thing, we cannot review planetary function by itself in isolation. I mean, we can do that when we're studying astrology at the beginning. Well, there is no other way to study it. But later on, when we're looking at the charts, there is many things that we need to take into consideration and especially when we're looking 
from the perspective of evolutionary astrology. So how can it be that the instinctual, instinctual, there is no fourth, instinctual acting of our unconscious desires, well, not ours as a vehicle, but the soul in conscious desires, will not be influenced by what in evolutionary astrology we call the bottom line. And what that bottom line consists of is the Pluto placement in the chart, because that's the soul. And so that particular soul, what is the soul? The soul contains the types of desires, according to the evolutionary intent, that the soul has had before this life. So the soul has spent many lifetimes developing this exploration, whatever it is in the chart by house and sign. And so coming into this life, we know that it naturally will be gravitating to this place in the chart. Why? For self-consistency, right? For security purposes. So the Pluto, and so in, in that way, this is the pulsation that our Mars feels and acts out. So Pluto placement. We also know that the soul actually creates a vehicle through which to express itself or to explore those desires. That egocentric structure will be the self note. Of course, if this has been going on for many lifetimes or for those people that don't believe in life, past lives, we're gonna talk about the um, things that have happened in the childhood. So those are all things that play within our unconscious. So those are all that amalgamation of all these things that are actually impulsed through Mars. And also <clears throat> for the evolution to proceed, we also have this thing called Pluto polarity point. It's the opposite direction of Pluto in the chart. And so for that Pluto polarity point to get realized, of course, that, that's not something that it's a must. Of course, we can do several attempts. It's not necessary that this is gonna happen in this life, but it's an evolutionary intent. And so in order for this Pluto polarity point place to get actualized, we're utilizing the place of the North Node. And of course, we know that the North Node has the ruler. So this all thing is contained within the pulsation that comes from the soul, all these experiences. And of course, the moon, which is the vehicle of who we know we are, is, I mean, it, it, on an everyday basis, is experiencing this pull between the south node and the north node theme, theme because it needs to integrate those two and, of course, proceed more strongly within the area of north node and the north node ruler and the pluripolarity point. So the thing is that when we're looking at Mars, we have to take this into consideration because that's going to give us more of an idea of how come, even though Mars is considered conscious desires of the soul, we end up doing one of the same things, and those one of the same things produce those consequences that we not necessarily like. So the other thing that we need to take into consideration when we're looking into Mars is the fact that Pluto also doesn't only contain desires. It also contains memories of emotional trauma. This is something that um, Jeffrey Wolf Green talks about. He talks about the trauma within, that contained within um, Uranus, which would be the mental trauma, and also the trauma that our Neptunes um, carry, and that would be the spiritual trauma. But those are all within our subconscious or unconscious. So it's not like we can identify as we live, oh, this is my spiritual trauma, or this is my emotional trauma, or this is my mental trauma. No, they're, they're working together. This is something that Michael De Becker calls trauma helix. Um, it's basically how those three planets are intertwining in the experience of whatever went wrong in the past. So think about it. If Mars is speaking up the desires of the soul on unconscious, unconsciously, well, the soul contains also those memories. So Mars will pick up those as well. Of course, it's not going to be able to give them words or uh, identify really what it is, but it's going to be, act, um, I'm sorry, unconsciously acting out 
all these fears, all these emotions, um, or trying not to act out in certain ways so that something that has happened in the past doesn't happen in the future. This is Jeff again. Now, again. So basically, he was saying the same thing. Um, coming into the Mars mechanics. So at one point, we have, uh, on one hand, we have the Pluto, which is the nature of the soul's evolutionary intention and the desires preceding this life, with South Node being the type of the ego that the soul created in order to explore those desires. Then Pluto, I don't know what that Gantt there means, but it's actually with the moon, supposed to be, correlates to our need for security, right? We cannot deny that. Uh, most of us will come into this life unconsciously gravitating to these dynamics because there is no other way. It's our primary cell, sense of self-definition. Again, Pluto placement. So the evolutionary intent is the Pluto polarity point with the North Node assisting and also the North Node ruler. So what happens is imagine this soul has certain groups of experiences within the same area, like that's gonna be Pluto of 11 house of Scorpio, Pluto uh, 12 house um, Libra, let's say. And so, Sorry. So, but within that placement, there's been all kinds of issues happening. Obviously, the soul needs to move from this place to the opposite place. So something in that experience has become um, a burden for our growth. Obviously, within that place, we also have experienced a lot of pain, a lot of emotional pain, because of certain things that have not gone right. So we cannot say that when we have emotional pain, the pain just stays on an emotional level. When we have an emotional pain, we always give it some sort of definition. That giving of a definition or whatever you wanna call it of that pain is actually our mental trauma. Our mental trauma goes, jumps in and says, oh my God, he left me. So that means I shouldn't go into relationships. So that's the mentality of it. But if this is repeated over and over again, eventually it becomes a core belief, Neptune. And so that core belief is, I don't deserve relationships. And how is this relating to our relation to God? Whatever we, however we perceive God is also a way to look into it. So we have all this in the past that has left unresolved. We're coming into this life. The soul is at a different vibration. It's not an, on a material vibration. And the soul doesn't have a way of connect, directly connecting to the vehicle that is, it has created. So what needs to happen? The future can only be known from the point of view of the past as perceived in the moment. 
So the present moment is defined by the past and the future. So if something in the past has left unresolved, it needs to be resolved here so that the future can happen. Well, how can we bring the thing from the past here when the soul cannot directly talk to us? Well, here is Mars. So Mars will be picking up all these desires, all these unresolved issues, all these stuckness in the repetition compulsion for the sense of security. And by picking those desires or whatever, it, it cannot give them a definition, but it will unconsciously act on them. And by acting unconsciously on them, it will create certain reality, certain uh, engagement with institutions, situations, people, places. And so by the reaction to the initiated action, we can see if we like that or we don't like that. And so if we continue to put ourselves in situations that the outcome of the situation is very unpleasant to us, what happens? The first thing that happens is we start blaming the situation. We start blaming the person that we have this interaction with, which we don't like, that makes us feel bad. We start blaming those because we don't see any other thing that could have possibly gone wrong. So that's a natural way. We know that we have Aries on one side and we have Libra on the other side. So projection is something through which we can understand certain things. So the first thing that happens is the projection. Oh, that's the person that is guilty of. So progressively, when we start finding ourselves in the same situation over and over again, of course, it's never one and the same because the characters change, but the essence is the same. So when we start finding ourselves in the same situation over and over again, eventually there's a point where we start asking questions, what's happening? How is it that I am acting and those are conscious desires of the soul when I absolutely don't like what's happening? But this is what's happening. The soul is trying through Mars to materialize some sort of situation which very much reminds of the past where something has not been resolved. Why? In order to be resolved. How, how could that be resolved? Well, we can look at the pluripolarity point, we can look at the North Node and the North Node ruler. And our Mars function eventually, because of this, that starting of going to deep reflection, understanding that this is something that we don't like anymore and our role in creating this, then that function can start to change. It's not like we're gonna diminish the instinctual action, but what's gonna happen is, is we will have more input and more ability to control the outcome and to control where exactly this instinctual action is happening. So again, how are we going to, uh, in order for the future to proceed, whatever is preventing this future from proceeding, it has to be resolved. That's happening through Pluto, absolutely emanating those old dynamics to Mars. Mars is acting them unconsciously. Mars can only be aware of the, from the action forward. So this is the conscious element of Mars. Of course, Mars is operating on the egocentric level of the soul, of the level of the moon, of the level of vehicle that carries that part of the soul. So Mars can only be aware of this action. And many times what happens is, and um, I hope that this is gonna show up through the charts that we're gonna look at into. If not, I'm gonna give an example uh, from other charts. So many times what happens is, is that we're becoming aware of our action because it's a material thing. We can see it, we can give it words. That's the Martian part of it. And then we will think that we're understanding what we're doing. We will think that we're understanding that um, the reason why we're doing this. But many times, that's not necessarily the reason that the soul has. 
And so the only thing the soul has, and we have to remember this over and over again, that the soul is very instinct, it's, it's very habitual. It actually needs this consistency, even though it's not working for it anymore because of the sense of security, it wants to, it does everything possible to go back to the old dynamic. So this constant play happens through the entire life of ours. And um, I think at this point, I wanna see if um, any of you has any questions on what I'm saying, and uh, if not, we'll proceed with charts. But um, I'd like to hear if you have any questions up to this point. If you have a question, go ahead and un unmute yourself and ask away. If there's no questions, I want to ask if that's kind of clear. Again, if there is anything that is not clear, I'd be happy to explain. Of course, it's going to be more easy when we look in the charts. Um, and maybe, again, let's just go right into the charts. And so the reason, the way the charts are ordered is following a certain flow, and you will see that. We're starting with, with uh, Mars in one sign and in one house, and then the next chart has the Mars in the same sign, but in different house. Then the following one has Mars in the same house, one, but in a different sign. And then the following has the same, the Mars in the same sign, but in a different house. I thought that's kind of fun. So um, we're gonna start with um, Kaylin and I'm going to read the questions later on. I want to start first with applying what I just said. And that is, before we look at Mars, let's just see where this Mars is receiving the impulses from in order to act. So what do we see here? We see Pluto in the 11th house and it's in Virgo. We also see that the south node is in the eighth house of Taurus, and the south node ruler happens to be in the first house of Libra, Venus. So we're gonna see that dynamic and how that dynamic is actually influencing the Mars actions. So Pluto in the 11th house. What is 11th house and what 11th house has to do? Ultimately, it's the individuation process. It's the place where we can be as unique individuality as we can be. It also has to do with our own tribe or our group of people. And so we have this Pluto here. So what the soul has been exploring from other lives, or there was something that was repeated in childhood, is how was it possible to maintain its individuality within the tribe, whatever that tribe was, within the group? We have the Virgo overlay. So since this is a dynamic that usually needs to change, that Virgo overlay can be an overly critical group of people or a soul that has started to work on itself and its individuation through trying to perfect itself. Whether this was influenced by the people around it, this is a demand by them, or this is a demand that the soul had from itself in order to fit into that group. Bottom line is that there's been a lot of pursuit for some sort of perfection 
And then what we know about the Virgo is that at some point it loses it into that perfection. And then what happens is it becomes self detrimental mm. because the more, when we lose that mark, then we lose the ability to maintain the connection with source, whatever source is. Of course, I'm not talking about, you know, in, in, in a strictly religious way, but the connection to our own inner being because we only can see it either through the lenses of the other people that are looking into us. And obviously we need to improve and improve and improve. And that way sacrificing what is really unique about us or because we have those demands from other people and we actually accept them and we start demanding of ourselves so much then there is no way we can see ourselves as deserving of anything or especially you know god's connection so god goddess let's talk about god goddess so when the soul was exploring those issues how was that happening through merging we're talking to the south node going to the south node in taurus through merging there was a merging with something that was perceived as a source of power source of strength and that was for the purposes of survival some sort of survival of consistency of feeling secure and through that, actually, it was a, the identity that was developed. We're looking now back to the first house ruler of the South Node, which happens to be Venus in Libra. So what happens is, is this identity actually has become very porous in terms of other people projecting onto myself whatever they want me to be and how I want to be nice, I want to be liked. If I'm not liked, if I don't do what other people are telling me, then my survival is threatened. And then I have to be the best in my community. I have to do more and more and more because if I don't do more, then I don't deserve, whatever. So this, of course, brings within itself the mental trauma, which happens to be Uranus in that same house, 11th house. And Kaylee, you can stop me anytime and tell me if something is not right or something, something that comes to anything, because it's important, right? So far, what you've been saying has been very accurate and is from my perspective of how I see how my life is playing out. My family, very powerful father. I've always been the nice girl. It's, it's, it, it's driven me crazy. I yes. just had a conversation with sisters yesterday about why do I always feel so undeserving? Yes. So it's very interesting to explore this through this perspective you're offering. Yeah. And then you see this, um, the, the powerful father in the third house in, in Sagittarius. So he had his word heard. So probably he was very prominent in the, uh, whatever the community was. And we also see that this, um, um, anyway, I'm sorry, I don't wanna <laughs> to the yeah. territory. So we're gonna go back to the mental trauma, and how it, it's forming again, because I talked about this in the presentation. So, the mental trauma in the 11th house, again, we're talking about my uniqueness in Leo. I'm, how do I shine out? Well, you don't get to shine out. You don't get to because um, there's all kinds of expectations for them, other people. So my creative self, my uniqueness is actually caught up in, again, expectations of others and I'm disassociated from it. We're talking about Uranus, and Uranus is also, again, the trauma signature. And we also see here that Uranus-Chiron opposition is squaring the nodes. So 
we know that the soul has been trying to establish this and has been trying to establish it within that community, groups of people, but it didn't work out. It hasn't been able to work out because the heaviness of the soul is the moment I get amongst group of people, I have to be good. I have to be better. I have to do this and this and this. So how am I going to have the guts to express who I am? First of all, I have to understand who I am. Do I have the chance to understand who I am when I've been asked to be this good person? So naturally, when we're looking at the pluripolarity point, which is where the soul needs to go in this life, and there's been many attempts, there's been many ways in which you have probably ended up there for a short period of time or through certain actions or by mistake even or coincidence. So the pluripolarity point happens to go into the fifth house and it's at, again, very beginning of Pisces. So what needs to heal here is my own uniqueness, my own shining star my own creativity, how do I want to express myself? How do I want to express myself? Not how I'm expected to express myself within the community, what I'm expected, that now the healing of this part is the goal of this life. And how we can utilize this is through the North Node and the North Node happens to be in the second house in Scorpio. And the interesting part here is that we're taken back to this Pluto because Pluto is the ruler of that North Node. What does that mean? That means that the more I go deep within and explore my own desires, what I like, what I dislike, my own body, my own, um, what I like to do, just really devote myself deeply of, on, on those things, then I will discover that value that I have just by the way I am to own it. I have to own it because the fact that I don't own it allows other people to take advantage of it. And it's not like some of them are taken advantage because they really want to take advantage. It's just because the energy is like this. And so that also brings how this can happen is, again, going back to Pluto, but this time we're not looking at Pluto as the soul, we're looking at the Pluto as the ruler of the South Node. And so again, 11th house Virgo, I have to be extremely discriminative. Again, that's gonna still happen within the community, but I don't have to, I have to be very discriminative in, in Virgo ways as to, to what extent I can go this way, to what extent I can provide this help to people, where I should stop because this is not me from this point onward. It's what I'm acting out from childhood, but that's not me. So that discrimination is what needs to happen, but it needs to happen based on me going deep within and actually honoring every little thing that I like. If I like the smell of the rain, I'm going to go ahead and smell rain as much as I want. If I want to have to go around the house naked, well, that's what I like. So I need to do that because those little parts of me have been dissociated because somebody didn't like them or I assume that somebody's not going to like them. And so only when this, so when this happens, then I will fully express this pluripolarity point, which happens to be, again, the fifth house Pisces. So let's go to Mars now and see what Mars is picking up out of this whole combo. So Mars picks up the desires of the soul, right? So desire of the soul from the past life is serving, 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 trying to be better, trying to be always good and, and uh, listening, being very sensitive to what other people are saying about me. How can I do even more and more and more? So when this is the unconscious impulse of Mars, what, our, what we will end up doing is, again, unconsciously, we're just picking this impulse. What we're gonna end up doing is, is going to be 
I'm going to throw myself into service to the point where I can deplete my energy just because that's what I know how to do. And to me, coming from this conditioning, I will think that I'm doing the right thing because there is no other thing to do. So I will be serving and serving and serving and there's not gonna be end to it. We're talking about 12 house. So there is no enough is enough. It just continues. And so the more we apply this Martian energy like this, the more at one point I'll feel like, but I, I, I don't, even the motivation is not going to be there. Why? Because there's depletion. So when we're not applying the Mars energy in the way, in the constructive way to help the expression of the pluripolarity point, but we're applying it because the soul is so deep within wanting its own from the past. That's where in that house and through that sign, meaning in that way, we're going to have our energy depleted. So the service work eventually will make you feel like it's, it's too much. It's too much. <clears throat> My background is as a uh, traditional psychotherapist. I'm a licensed therapist mm. um, and have totally changed my work over the years because I felt so depleted and I've really focused so much on trying to figure out who I am and what I'm about and what really does make me happy. And it's kind of interesting being in a kind of a beach motel, funky beach motel in on East Loma Harris, Mexico, um, because I wanted, I've been wanting to come here for years and years um, away from cold winter. And of course, all the reasons why I shouldn't, um, but I'm feeling like I'm moving somewhat more into that ability to just choose what is the right thing for me. And, and it's been amazing to me how great it feels to be here. But yeah. So that's the way. And so the more you get into that, that's basically what you're doing right now is you're doing your, your North Node in Scorpio. And you know that there's um, Uranus that is on this, I'm sorry, not Uranus, but your, uh, yeah, Uranus. Is it, no, uh, Saturn is on your Chiron, or it's just courting it there. Um, so, and then also you have this conjunction that's gonna happen between the Mars and the Venus and the Pluto. And that one happens to come because this was one of your questions, uh, happens to happen in your um, fourth house, right? So the fourth house ultimately has to be, well, we're talking about home, but what is home? I mean, not every one of us feels really safe and protected in home. So that ultimately is our emotional security. And so the emotional security, of course, is based on um, what is giving us the nurturing. So bringing this Venus, of course, the, the, what Venus wants to do actually in that first house is, is to, um, to establish a relationship with its own identity and recover and um, regain this balance between who I am and what are those other people. So that's what, Venus, what, the, that's what the, uh, the idea is for this life in terms of Venus. Of course, it's the ruler of the North Node, of the South Node, but it also has its own goal. And so what you're doing is you're, th that Venus, that idea, that goal, together with this Mars that has worked in this old way, actually are coming together within the area of where you feel or you're supposed to feel, you're supposed to find this, this emotional security. So it's my personal relationship with myself and how I want to express this, how I want to act on that. And so this happening in the fourth house is basically you are starting a new cycle in which those two are supposed to operate in a different way. 
so that you can get to this pluripolarity point. And so once you start acting out, you've already started obviously, but so when you start to act on this with full strength, then Mars turns from, oh, I'm gonna serve until I drop dead to I'm gonna be very discriminative. And through my discriminative work, I will actually connect, find out, um, reunite with my demon nature, like what I am actually, the, the, my natural worthness mm -hmm. that makes me worthy for whatever, the connection to, again, God, goddess or whatever, your soul, you're reuniting when you soul with your soul through doing the discriminative work of, okay, I'm not gonna engage in this action. I'm gonna engage in this action. So, and also, I mean, that's the reason and that's the goal of the sun in the 12th house is for you progressively to, it's like carving a wood. You're basically removing those parts of the wood until the fish happens. So you're removing those things that are not you. So that when you're embracing your, your true self, that's what happens. That just feels very, very accurate and very much a reflection of my life. And yes. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad to hear. It's interesting to see the pieces come together that way. I hadn't thought about the way they interact. So it's, it's yeah, I'm eager to see even how this plays out in other charts, but I'm, 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 I'm yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm taking it all in. All right. Uh, so should we move to the next one? Uh, that would be Karen. Is Karen here or she's not here yet? She is not here yet. Okay, so we'll move to the next one. Um, next. Well, so the reason I had Karen next, as I've explained, is because um, she has Mars in Virgo as well, but it's in a different house, right? And so the reason why I put Francisco next was because his Mars happened to be in the same place, it just in a different sign. So I wanted to have this flow. Um, so anyway, um, Francisco. We can come back to Karen if, if, if she uh, comes or, or you can, um, we can just skip. Okay, that's fine. Um, we can do more discussions if we can fill the hour uh, after the chart of uh, Kadiri. So um, I don't think we're going to have a problem with filling the hour. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to approach the chart in the same way. Um, and then if we don't cover the questions, I read the questions later on. Um, so, again, we cannot just take Mars and start pondering on Mars. And if we do that, chances are we're not going to understand it. We're not. Or we're going to see it and we're going to be like, what the hell? I'm not doing this. So we start from Pluto, right? Because, again, Mars is receiving those impulses from the soul that's coming from the past experience full with I want to stay here. I want to experience this, even if it's bad, because I'm used to it on a very deep subconscious level. And I have my pain here, and I work know how to work with the pain, and that's okay, and I want this. And so, again, Mars is supposed to um, pick up those waves from the soul. So looking at the Pluto, Pluto in the Virgo in the second house, we always look at the sign, I'm sorry, at the house first, and that's something that Jeffrey Wolverine was very determined about. There's a reason why. We, the planet never goes into a sign. The planet is circling around the sun. Our house system is actually overlaid by the signs, and that's the important part. So we see the Pluto in the second house. 
And we're going to talk about that first. So Pluto in the second house, we know that the soul has been exploring over past life, or this was very important and has been repeating pattern in childhood, either one or both, um, with issues around um, survival or resources or self-worth or all of the both. And so how were those explored? whether the person had to be self-sustaining or there was a depletion of resources, we're talking about Virgo, or it was made to feel unworthy in terms of my own value system, or the value system was not really able to develop outside of what people have put onto me. Um, those are all possible um, ways but the bottom line is that second house we know it has to do with establishing my own thing establishing my own values i have to understand what my values are first to establish those and i have to figure out a way to provide for myself and i have to really protect myself and by protecting myself I mean, I don't need to have all the distraction. I don't have to have very solid base. And I also don't want to have all this emotional entanglement. And I don't want to share myself that easily because I don't feel secure. So whether this is because I perceive myself as not that worthy, or this is because I think that usually resources are not available or somebody has issues with my resources, it doesn't matter. Bottom line is I don't necessarily feel worthy on a very deep level. And I rather stay by myself and do my own thing than go and engage with other people. So that's the exploration of the soul. How was that explored? Through the South Node and the South Node happens to be in the 12th house in Leo. So those were egocentric structures that were designed by the soul. And so we know that it's coming up from exploring this deprivation of resources and my own worth and how I don't want to share myself with others because of that. And here we go through totally wiping out my own specialness, how I feel special, where is my self-actualization, um, where, where is my shining, how do I self-create myself? Well, that was not really um, possible. So the way to explore this unworthiness was through not allowing or actually um, losing my own specialness. And so in order to, that's the paradox here, to feel special. So um, I had to actually go ahead and deny my own specialness in different ways, whether I had to be in some sort of seclusion or uh, nobody was noticing me, or I just didn't think good about myself or had to be in some sort of group where Again, my specialness was not recognized. That was the only way I can feel myself as my identity. So when the soul is coming from this place, and of course, there is a mental trauma here. And then the mental trauma, we see the Uranus in the same house, the second house in Libra. And what this trauma speaks about, again, I mean, there could be details that I'm not covering. That's because we're not talking about the life too much. Um, but essentially, we're talking about this trauma that has to do with, again, projecting my self-worth being projected onto me by other people. And so... And also that has to do with the way I do money and, and how I have to 
take into consideration other people's opinions of all that. So this exploration, all these issues are fueled through Mars. Again, Mars acts unconsciously. It picks up the waves, it picks up the urges, but it cannot give them definition. The only thing it can define is the outcome of its actions. So the urge is there and then Mars acts. This Mars happens to be on the cusp of the sixth and the seventh house. So obviously we're gonna, or Francisco will feel that he's urged to act or there's consequences of his actions that are going to be more felt in those two houses, everyday job, the reality, and my and his um, relationships. So Mars happens to be an Aquarius. Well, we know that there is already a disconnect there because Mars is this fiery sign. I mean, it's supposed to be, you know, Aries. And then we have Aquarius overlaying this Mars. So we also have it again, sixth and the 12th. So the sixth house is Vergonian house because it's in the natural zodiac is ruled by uh, Venus, I'm sorry, um, Virgo. So coming from those issues of where is my self-worth? I need, do I need to disappear so somebody actually sees me? Or is that the only way that I can you know, have a definition of who I am and what's going on. And how do I experience my specialness just by being with other people or... So those things are fueled through Mars. So instinctively, Mars will act in a way that... Let's talk about relationships. How am I going to relationships from the impulses or old seated ideas of my own self-worth. So obviously um, I will not want to connect or I will be a little bit not too sure um, that deep merging and intimacy is going to be a little bit, I'm gonna be very uncomfortable with that because deep merging can only happen from a point of me exposing myself. If I've been led to believe that my worth is not there or I have to do more and more in order to, for somebody to give me that worth, then, and I, I don't have the habit of expressing myself fully, how am I gonna express myself in relationships? What type of relationships that Mars is going to be initiating? It's going to be initiating the same relationships that are going to enforce the feeling of Pluto because Pluto wants to stay there. So the self unworthiness, I'm gonna feel like those women don't really connect to me. They don't connect to me. They come, they get, they go. So in the actual field of work, what's going to happen, and we're gonna talk about the fact that the North Node is conjunct at Mars. What's going to happen is what type of work I'm going to have for myself. Well, of course, I'm gonna be the one that is initiating some sort of work that is unique for myself. Um, I can be innovator. I can do all this stuff. The, the problem is to what extent this work that I'm doing is actually giving me the knowledge or the, the feeling that I'm special, that I am worthy. And so the thing is that the soul is always going to try to get this, but there's gonna be all this pull and the pull will be from all kinds of people that are gonna tell me, oh, that's not good, or you have to do something else. Remember, Uranus is in the second house. It's the projection that comes from other people about my own worth. So again, Mars is acting unconsciously on those desires of the soul. The soul wants self-consistency. 
but it also has this evol evol evolutionary push because it needs to overcome itself. It just it can't do it by itself. So we look at the pluripolarity point and the pluripolarity point happens to be in the eighth house and it's in Pisces. So, and that is going to happen by facilitating that by the north node facilitating that with the north node ruler so what is the goal here the merge it's important for the soul to reach a place where this idea of my not being worthy or lack general lack in the terms of my resources or how worthy I am because there is an equivalent sign between those two, has to be, again, Pisces healed. How is this going to be healed? Well, it's not like if, if I am conditioned that way, it's not going to be so easy for me to go and open up. How are you opening up when the underlying thing is constantly, oh, I don't know. I mean, they're going to find me unworthy. So I can only, so think about, that this is a very deep emotional setup that is not easy to sever or to clean so this thing even though i've i've felt that way for the longest time and it's not a good way to deal but because it was repeating so much i'm used to that feeling i'm used to that feeling and we all know or maybe we not all know but there are studies that have come up with the conclusion that every emotion that we're experiencing has a chemical equivalent in the body. So imagine what happens with drug addicts. So they get addicted to the substance, right? Or whatever they get addicted to. Well, if one type of emotion is repeated many, 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 many times, granted, it's not pleasant, but we're used to it. The fact that we're used to it creates that need for it because we have and we, we need to feel secure. So even on that very subliminal level, without even understanding, we're gonna be recreating in our lives certain situations, certain interactions where the interaction will produce that type of chemical and also the emotion. So all this work is, is not easy for us to move from one side of the chart to another. It's not, but it's our life um, hero journey, hero's journey. So it's not easy to actually go ahead and open up and say, yeah, I mean, that's who I am. And I'm not less worthy than somebody else. I'm not less worthy because you don't like how I make my money. I'm not less worthy because you don't like something of me. That's, that's absolutely, that's bogus. And we know it mentally, but the emotion is so deep and it creates this need for repetition compulsion. That's what Jeffrey used to say. And of course he said it because it's true. So how do I go in the opposite direction and open myself up just really <laughs> trusting that I'm enough as it is, that's it. And from that point, I can merge with somebody else. I can go deep into a relationship and I can explore that relationship. Well, that could be, and obviously it's very mandatory for the soul to start looking into that direction because the North Node has this Mars attached to it in this life. And it happens to be in the exact same degree. So it is so imminent that I start expressing my own uniqueness, uh, we're talking about Aquarius, in the everyday situation, well, that's gonna be my work. So eventually I have to work something that is very unique to myself, whether somebody likes it or not. And of course, they're not gonna like it. They're gonna try to fight it. And that's gonna come from the family. We have Scorpio in the fourth house. And we also have, <clears throat> sorry, we have, um, Jupiter in Scorpio as well, but that's why this Mars is there because the impulse of action is going to not stop this soul to go into the opposite direction this time. 
And so what this is calling for is I will, I mean, sometimes that will mean that I have to be distant a little bit because Aquarius within itself actually <clears throat> has this call for objectification. So I have to distance myself and look into it and see, am I doing the right thing? And if I feel doubts of what I'm doing, are those doubts because somebody's on my back and telling me that this is not the right thing to do? Or this is because it's not my fullest unique expression. And that applies to the relationship as well. Because if I act the old dynamics of the soul, then I will end up with women that are going to mirror exactly what I feel about my own worthiness. And of course, that's not real. That's actually learned something, but it's learned and it's established so deep within the emotional body that it's different to shake up. And so we look at the North Node <clears throat> ruler to see a little bit more of a detail of how this could happen. And that ruler of the North Node is this Uranus. And Uranus, again, second house, Libra. I need to establish this balance into how I relate to myself, unbiased or uninfluenced of the other people. I may have people that are telling me oh, what you're doing is not right, what you're working is not right, how you're making your money is not right, how your sexual is not right. But am I going to accept it? And if I'm accepting it, why am I accepting it? So um, that Mars, the more we become aware of this evolutionary call, the more we will start tweaking that Mars action. Mars will still continue to act very unconsciously and very instinctually. Like, okay, there's gonna be another relationship I will feel so compelled to go into. But then the thing will be, okay, well, this is the person. Let me see what this person actually is willing to accept in me. And if they are not willing to accept the whole me, then why would I go there? So we have this Chiron up there on the cusp of the seven and the eight house in Aries. So the call here is for my own identity to be the one who is merging with other people, my identity, not what I'm perceiving I am, not what I'm perceiving through the eyes of other people that I am. And so through this merging, I'm going to define my own value system in terms of my beliefs, because my beliefs so far has been influenced by people of power who were telling me what's right and what's not right. So this is the call. Um, Francisco, I'll ask you if you have any questions to just go right ahead. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I have many comments and questions. Yes, like you're right. I, I have many people who have issues with my resources who, or who want to come after my resources and I have- What been... type of issues do they have? Do they, uh, like, what, what would they not liking? The, the amount of money you're making or it's too much or too less or-, or... Uh, The amount and the way I make it. What, why is this uh, their business? Like, do they identify with, with you in some way or? Well, for example, I could make more money in one business deal, I could make more money than my father in two years. And they consider that very disrespectful. How dare I make more money than the almighty Don Francisco, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and on so the other hand, like they did not like it. And also, they don't like the way I made it. They preach about honesty and not taking money under the table or not passing money under the table. And well, in my business, I have to do what I needed to do to make things happen. So they didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how is this making you feel? Well, at first, for several years, I put a lot of aspects of, of me in the shadow mm -hmm. until I couldn't do it anymore. I, I, I was imploding 
Mm -hmm. So basically, I told my mother about two and a half years ago, you know what? You don't like how I make my money. You won't see a dime out of it. And oh, you're also giving the money and they don't like how you, are they taking the money and they don't like how you make them? Well, yeah, she, she wanted a, a, like a, a share of my money and then, and then didn't approve of the way I made it. So I said, well, you won't see a dime. And we haven't spoken in two and a half years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My father passed away about two years ago. Well, almost two years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So th that's the again the Uranus in the twelfth house. Um, but you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. How are the relationships? Well, I haven't been in a relationship for ten years. Mm -hmm. Well, I have got gone out, but with people who I I know in advance that nothing is going to happen. Only a, maybe hang out two or three times, and no more than that. So yeah, I've been refusing to connect with someone because they are after the money. They want to get intimate after the second date and then demand to be introduced as my significant other and be taken care of financially. <laughs> so, so no way. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, I developed like, a, I call it the money test. I tell them, you know what, I'm bankrupt. And they run away immediately. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Mm, so now, this mm, lack of self worth you mentioned, I think it is very clear in, my, in this 10th and 4th house axis. This 10th house Saturn, I think, it is a narcissistic, castrating mother. And the 4th house Neptune is an alcoholic father. But my father was a Scorpio also. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. And then you say that, well, the, the cure for me is well, the polarity point, which is to allow myself to merge with. But now that uh, my Mars is retrograde, so maybe it means that I should take my time to do that, like take my time to know the other person, see if she's the right one, to get to know oh. each other first. So the, the Mars retrograde is, uh, again, you, you're, you're reviewing, you're acting, and what exactly, what is the part that you're putting out there? So you do understand that when you have this deep, uh, Pluto is in the second house, and the second house is the place where we don't want to merge. We want to be by ourselves, because any merging, any deep uh, connection is very scary for the second house, Torian second house. I want to maintain my stability and I don't want shakeups. I don't know how to share myself. I mean, you, you, you can reflect onto that and see how are you sharing yourself in those relationships? What exactly is the action that you're putting out there? So you have Mars, Again, retrograde, it's a good point. We have to review certain things. You're giving them the money test and all that. But this, this is very important in the way our Mars is, are acting. Because Mars, again, we can act in certain way. Just because we see how we act, we can only interpret this action from the point, from the perspective of our um, self, right? But we don't know what the soul actually wants. The soul is comfortable in staying by itself because that's something that the soul knows. It's safe there. It's, it's very safe. But, and so how Mars we're going to pick up those and act out will be, oh, I'm really not too much into that relationship or I will... Again, that's why I'm asking you to what extent you're sharing yourself, because we have Aquarius on the, on the top of this house, and then Aquarius, maybe not too relational. I mean, it's not maybe, it's not too relational. It's not too private. It's not too personal. So by acting out in that way, just listen to that. You're attracting women that are not relational. So what is this giving to the soul in the second house? Yuppie, I'm by myself. 
I don't have to deal with somebody else, but this is unconscious. It's unconscious. And that's how Mars, I mean, it's beautiful when we get to a point where we can direct the Mars's actions, but for the most part, it's acting very unconscious. So you can say, yeah, I don't, I don't meet women that are actually um, very, you know, open and they don't want to love me for who I am and all that. But deep down within, there is this thing that connections are not safe. How would connections be safe if you're coming from, you know, this, this family where you had this father and this mother? So this is what you know about deep merging. There was no deep merging. There, there was no feeling of I'm understood. I'm good by the way I am. I don't need to make a lot of money to be liked. I don't need to, you know what I mean? So this deep relation to myself where I'm supposed to feel liked for just who I am. And so I'm going to open up because I have this backup is not there. And so naturally, every time I'm about to go into a relationship, there's going to be this thing inside. It's like, I don't know to what extent I can. So the easiest thing to do unconsciously is to attract this woman that is going to stay for a little bit and then go. I don't know if that makes sense because we're talking about very deep unconscious dynamics here. Actually, it makes all the sense in the world. And I would like to add that it also happens to me when I try to meditate and connect, feel connected. Yeah. At some point, I'm beginning to feel connected and something inside me disconnects me. There you go. Okay, so that's it. That's important to actually, yeah, be aware of that. Because when it happens the next time, it's a good thing for you to actually explore it. See and, and, and journal and see what are the thoughts that are coming up. Um, it, I mean, I don't want to go into the entire chart because this is not the, the you know, the whole... Uh, the point, yeah. <laughs> beyond the, the, yeah. But, but this, this connection has been betrayed. You know, I mean, Jupiter is in the Scorpio in this, um, in this fourth house. So there is a fear to go there naturally. Well, there is a reason why Chiron is in the eighth house. So that's interesting that you're bringing this up because that is a, a very important part. It's re it relates to the whole thing. I mean, your primary relationship as the life progresses, will have to be with your own uniqueness, but a uniqueness is not there. I mean, not uniqueness, but your, your shining light. That shining light was not there in, in, the, in the childhood. It, it's not there. So the connection was not there. And so every connection is very, um, it, we, we're afraid. And so, uh, of course, because ultimately we have to protect ourselves. And that happens again, the Pluto itself, within itself, within its core, is also containing that protection. I have to be protected. And so this is so deep within our soul that it's emanating that thing. And so that's why I was saying that to say that Mars is the conscious desires of the soul, it's absolutely not correct. And I think that Jeffrey Wolverine never says that. He says that there is conscious component component on Mars, but that's strictly has to do with after the action because we can see it. So it's important for you to explore that because ultimately we all want to be deeply loved and we cannot reach that intimacy without sharing ourselves, but sharing ourselves is very, very scary because we've never gone there. Or maybe we've gone there and something happened and the mental trauma came and said, no, I'm not sharing myself. This is another interpretation of Uranus in the second house and in Libra relationships. No, no. Okay. Just have this, you know, again, the exploration. Uh, because uh, I'm sure it's going to, you know, lead to a place. I mean, you're going to have Uranus now crossing this, um, I'm sorry, Saturn 
um, is right there or it's going to be closer. So um, it's it's a good and then you you also have the Chiron return. Um, so it, it's a good time to explore those that deep thing. And also Pluto is trying my natal Pluto. Yeah, so that's a good, that's a good energy. Yeah, that's a good energy, and it's happening from the sixth house. So, yeah. So this transit can help me explore that that fear to connect. Yeah, I mean you can actually also use your body. I mean how the body feels. Well, well you... I've noticed that I wake up in the middle of the night every day. I mean for for the past years, and I and I believe that it is because. At the moment, my conscious mind begins to disconnect and let the subconscious mind wander freely. It wakes me up in order to stay in control and don't let me connect, right? Well, see, this is another another topic, another issue in the second house. We want to be in control. Taurus wants to be in control. Taurus wants to know where our boundaries are. I mean, that's why Jeffrey Wolf Green talks about the frog and the well. Um, right. Because everything else is scary and you have had some scary things while you were growing up. I mean, we're not talking about past lives even. Yeah, so, that, that. yeah. So, um, just go for it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's very instructive, very useful. Good. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go to Kadiri. And so um, we start again uh, from that Pluto. And the Pluto here happens to be in the fifth house. Fifth house, it's retrograde. And it's in Libra. So Pluto in the fifth house, great so far, right? Exploration of uh, you know, my own special child, uh, how I creatively actualize my soul, my way. And right here, we got this Libra overlay. So what would that Libra overlay be? Well, ultimately we can talk, well, generally speaking, we can say, oh, this was a great artist right or maybe it is an artist right now but there is another aspect to libra which we want to explore and that aspect to libra is my self creativity was again projected upon or was defined by other people or i'm very sensitive to other people and how they see me as a you know my own creative self so this is what the soul has been exploring. And how this has been explored is through, we said, South Node in the 10th house. And it happens to be in Pisces. So if my uh, creative self um, has been conditioned or um, projected upon by other people, or I was very sensitive about that topic in relationships, then I there was, there was this um, egocentric structure that was built and that had to do with my own um, integrity, my own uh, place out there in the world was actually diluted in a way so and that has happened through again going back to the seventh house because neptune is the ruler of the south node other people you know people in my relationships of all sorts are actually um defining what's truth and not truth for myself um, so, or I will go into all kinds of different relationships and I will buy into what the people are believing in or um, uh, their view of the world, if you wish. So 
this is where the soul is coming from. And I mean, that could also be somebody that has a very important position out there in the world, which is actually of service, right? So this is what the Pluto contains within itself. It's like this, this um, powerful Plutonian core. Um, and that is what's emanating and what Mars is picking up. So Mars happens to be in the eighth house in Aquarius. I'm sorry, uh, one, two, three, four, ninth house in Aquarius. And so where is this action going to be expressed? So what is my own belief system? So what, what do I, what's my truth? So how am I going to express my truth? Or how am I going to actually engage with my own truth? So this Mars picking all this from the Pluto and the South Node and uh, the, the Neptune. And of course we have Neptune and um, Venus squaring this nodal axis. So what Mars is going to be doing there is gonna feel this urge to actually again, pick up this prevailing um, belief system or actually looking up for its own, looking out for its own, this is Aquarius. Um, so there's, there's gonna be this constant, okay, I'm gonna see what these people are thinking, what these people are doing and see if that's mine. And then if I don't like it, I'm just gonna continue and find my own way. So, but that by itself has become an issue right? Because you go for what your unique beliefs are, and then what do you do with them if other people don't agree with that? So Mars is constantly picking up that thing. Okay, I need to find, so I, I have experience of how my personal expression, self-expression, has been overlaid by, um, again, the expectations of others. And I've, of course, have reached a point where I'm in this position where I can you know, have certain way of administering things or doing things, being very uh, prominent, but prominent in terms of service, right? And so, I have this constant interactions with other people. And this constant interaction with other people actually makes me a little bit too um, influenced by, again, I mean, I kind of lose track of where, where is my truth really in the relationships? Where can I find myself? Well, if that's not my truth, let me go. Let me go find it. Well, I'm going to try to find it, but then if I find it, um, how is this going to work out? So Mars is going to be constantly picking up that from Pluto, and as it picks up that from Pluto, it actually is acting out this way of I know certain things, and those certain things are different than what everybody else knows. But then we know that the essential thing of the ninth house is alienation. So, okay, I know those things, but how can I bring those things and be within, you know, the other people and how those people are gonna accept that. Now we see that the plurality point happens to be in the 11th house. So it's important, it's important, it's imperative in this, in this life to actually find out my identity in terms of uniqueness and to actually present it in the groups of people. That's how they're supposed to know me. And that is supposed to happen through the North Node and the North Node happens to be in this fourth house. So in Virgo, so how am I going to find a place where, I mean, I'm gonna be looking for a place where I'm gonna to have to feel at home, but I also have to really define what home means, right? Because uh, that's where I'm supposed to feel 
comfortable in order to express myself. And that's where I'm going to be comfortable in order to go ahead and pursue and that knowledge or engage myself with the integrity of my knowledge. So what is important here to mention is that the skip step between the south, between the south node and the north node, which happens to be in the seventh house of Neptune and Venus is again, where have I betrayed? Not because I wanted to, but because whatever happened or I was put in that position, again, my own truth. Or how can I engage with people from the place of my own truth, considering that I'm in the quest to go ahead and find it? Um, so I'm going to stop here and, and ask um, Kadiri to um, let me know what you think so far. Am I off? What's, is there anything that's resonating or anything that you want to share? Hi, yes, um, definitely resonates. And um, I grew up um, with a father who was a Southern Baptist minister. And um, I don't follow the same belief system, but I had to participate in the world that my family created and kind of hide in plain sight. Mm. Um, and so I feel like I learned how to wear a mask to keep me safe. And, but I do love, like you said, engaging in different multiple groups. Mm. Um, I haven't yet, I, I have felt the urge to want to speak more of my own philosophy and values. Mm. I haven't started yet, but I also do work in the field of service and um, uh, I, I don't know that I've been able to even do it in the way that I feel I want to. I feel like I've always been at the edge, but not able to be my full self because it seems in ways uh, taboo or impractical. <laughs> Impractical, that's interesting. Um, so when you're saying taboo, it's taboo because of, uh, because of people are not going to accept it or? Yeah, and um, the way I would, the way I feel I should operate, um, you know, in my working life, I've, I, my view of professionalism, I think, and hierarchy isn't the same as the world that I work with. Um, I don't really believe in hierarchy and I tend to overshare and be a little too close. <laughs> um, and I think in the world of business that hasn't really served me in the way that I would like for it to. And it makes me feel like I really want to do something on my own. And I haven't yet done that because somewhere I've told myself that that isn't going to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I keep making a list of things. Okay, well, if I do this and I feel maybe this will be the thing, like I keep making goals for myself and, and it has never been, I've never yet given myself the, the chance to do it um, with 100% autonomy. I seem to want to work at a place <laughs> versus for myself. And I really think I should work for myself. Yeah. And a lot of my work is hands-on and what I prefer is communication verbally or written. And I haven't had much verbal or written communication in the work I do. It's, um, I'm a healing arts practitioner. So I do a lot in silence and a lot with my hands. Yeah. Um, so what you said makes sense. So me. you, you, so you understand, so, I mean, not, you understand, of course, you know, that, you, that, that um, Pluto retrograde, there's a very important part to it, of course. You, you, you're basically um, finding your own way, and that's going to be a unique way in, in your self-expression. That's the goal here. And so that unique way of self-expression, you're going to come into by, you know, there's going to be a lot of feeling of alienation that's totally 
part of it because you have to create it. You have to craft it, you own. And you need, you need actually time to go deep and connect to that specialness because that is a specialness. It's, it's you constantly will feel on a very subconscious level, of course, that there is specialness. There, there is a special purpose to this life. And so this, this retrograde is constantly throwing you back there within yourself. And it's like, okay, I have to, uh, and, and what the important part with that retrograde when it applies to Pluto is that you're following the urges that are coming to you because the urges eventually are going to actually compose that path because at the beginning you may not see it. But the idea is that this self creative purpose is realized. And of course, that self-creative purpose is actually something that will, um, you know, change the whole life in 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 a, in a different. Um, it's gonna put it on a on a different um, track. So, the the fears and and how uh, the fear is actually addressed. What is the fear of? Is it the fear of um, what what is it? that you're not able to so far? Um, I feel, I have felt for a long time um, that I would be getting in trouble. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble growing up when I was young uh, because of how I grew up, I believe. I don't know that that would have been the case in another family. So I carry with me that I don't really want to do something that other people don't approve of. But pretty much my entire philosophy are is on the edge. And um, I know now that there are people who really love me and people who will absolutely hate me. And I'm okay with that. Um, I think I've put other things in front of it as a priority. And um, I believe more now, uh, especially since I hit my um, Uranus opposition, or um, I'm not thinking that right now, but um, I guess I've felt afraid to be too different and that it wouldn't be okay with, with my family mm -hmm. and the place that I came from. Mm -hmm. And I uh, recently got divorced, but I, I feel like I married a man who was very much like my family. That usually happens, yes. <laughs> so um, I, I think the fear for me would have been being wrong to make the, like making wrong choices because the way I go about life doesn't, hasn't, isn't in alignment with, you know, I really do listen to my feelings and sometimes I can't explain why I need to do what I need to do. I just have to do it. And I do stay true to that the most part, but it's gotten, I've gotten a lot of pushback because of it. And I, until the last couple of years, haven't really been okay with um, the way I feel I might need to hermit or be quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more okay with that now. And, and especially the last two years, I've been trying to build like a cocoon around myself and limit my interaction with certain groups and people. And um, I think one thing too is I, once I build a relationship with groups or people, I like to maintain that. And now I'm learning more that sometimes it's okay to let that fade away. Uh, when it feels no longer like a match. Um, mm -hmm. But that separation process has been hard for me, dealing with the loneliness and the parting. Yeah, well, there's a reason why there's all kinds of planets. I mean, there's four planets in this ninth house. But that's also, um, it's almost like a support system because the alienation is stated also in that retrograde to Pluto and um, the impulses of the soul um, that uh, Mars will be picking up will be to go in that direction. It cannot stop it. Um, so, of course, we see that the overlay of Mars and the sun is Aquarius. So there is this, this traumatic reverberation of, oh, I'm going to be by myself. Well, because that's alienation taken to the, to the core. But um, 
you've separated from your husband. And I'm sure that this was a very tough decision. And in many ways, it was, it took too long, maybe. But um, exactly. Yeah. Um, we got our first divorce, but got back together, or we filed for divorce after three years of marriage, um, but got back together and stay married for 19 years. <laughs> so we knew way before it was over that it was over. So exactly what you said. <laughs> and also you see that the, the uh, Aries and the uh, Venus are uh, intercepted signs. So the soul is, is, is very, it's like a baby steps of how you're expressing yourself. And of course, um, there is scary, but the thing is that if you look at from the uh, perspective of why I dragged that family and, and, and this person or those kind of relationship into my life, why I drag them. I always give an example. I had a husband that was against astrology and he had certain, so many issues with astrology. And um, at the beginning, when I started to study it, I, I was hiding. I was hiding that I'm studying astrology. And to me, that was natural, normal thing to do at that time. Although it wasn't normal for a person to be, to think that astrology is bogus in 21st century, that was, that was not normal for me. But it was normal for me to react that way, to hide. Now, looking back, I, you know, I'm ashamed of myself in a certain way. But the question is, out of so many astrologers out there, I mean, a man doesn't need to be interested in astrology to be an astrologer. They could be just irrelevant about astrology or, or, or just like looking into it. Out of all those, I attracted or had to deal with somebody that is telling me that I'm an idiot because I'm looking at astrology. Yeah, but I was the one who was hiding. So obviously there is a process that needs to happen between that point and that point. And it's very scary. I mean, it's very scary to stay, in, I mean, for me it was to stay, to say, well, no, astrology stays, which I eventually did. And then he had to go, uh, not because of astrology, but astrology was something. So, but the thing is, how else I'm gonna build the guts? And, and it's, it's not, it feels scary based on my past dynamics. It feels scary based on your past dynamics that, okay, my specialness will not gonna be recognized. I have to acquiesce. And so that is scary, but it's scary until you build the muscle. And so once you build the muscle, it's gonna be like, oh, really? I did that before? That's so stupid. So the whole point I'm trying to make is that you can't escape this impulses that are coming from the soul, from the polarity point of the soul and the Mars. The only thing that we can be uh, focused, we can, you know, kind of derail uh, our uh, path forward is the fear. But that fear is something that we're picking up again through the, the, the soul that is emanating through Mars as well. And Mars, instinctually acts out everything that comes from Pluto. Pluto carries the fear of what's going to happen if I'm myself. So that's why I said that we cannot look at how Mars picks up those impulses from Pluto if we don't look at Pluto also containing the emotional trauma and the intertwine with the emotional trauma, with the spiritual trauma, Neptune, and with the Uranus trauma, um, mental trauma, because they go hand in hand. When somebody leaves you and you really love them, that's an emotional trauma, right? It's, it's, it, it, it's sad, it's bad. But then also that's the mental trauma that says, oh, they don't like me. So I'm not somebody, so that's the mental one. And then eventually this repeats and repeats and repeats and becomes a belief. And that belief, we don't necessarily are aware of even of our beliefs because they're so deeply ingrained within us. And so the belief is um, nobody, I'm, I'm, I, I can't be, nobody relates to me. 
So if nobody relates to me, what would be the compensatory mechanism that I'm going to implement in order to be around people? Well, definitely I'm going to acquiesce to everybody and be a different person to different people so I can gather as many people as possible. But then you get to a point where, where, who am I? <laughs> so that was the thing. And then you have this Neptune and well, the good thing is that there is a new cycle that's starting between your beliefs of how your beliefs are not more important than the ones of the others. But then this Venus conjoining this Neptune is like, I have to start a new cycle here and I have to go ahead and express my beliefs because my primary relationship will be expressing my beliefs when I'm relating to other people. So something like that. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> okay, Sue, so, um, what are we doing? I'm well, sure. I, th so. I think we. I think we're there. Okay. <laughs> we're we're almost at two hours actually. So I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I think. So um, I think uh, we might as well um, yeah, okay. wrap it up. You know, go. You know, you take a few more minutes and wrap it up and and come to your conclusions. But um, this has been very awesome and very informative. Good. I'm glad. Um, that's the last slide. And what I wanted to express with this slide is again, just remember, we cannot look at Mars by itself. Mars, that's within the paradigm, says speaking up unconscious desires of the soul and we time and time again we don't even realize how the unconscious is actually unconscious so we instead of so what we have the capacity to do when looking into this chart as a whole is to actually realize where we are betraying ourselves not because we want to betray ourselves but because of the heaviness of the soul and its past dynamics but there is a goal to reach. There is a plurality point. There is a north node. There is a north node ruler. And the more we engage into that direction, the more our Mars will become, if not totally conscious, it's going to have conscious moments into it. And if we do something instinctually, we will have the capacity to calibrate the consequences. And then those consequences, we're going to get them more consciously. So the difference, if you want to have just a picture in your head, is if we are just constantly acting out the unconscious desires, complexes, that's how Mars will look like. We're constantly falling or we're constantly not able to control our movement. But then when we become a little bit more conscious about it and look into the chart from those old perspectives, then the movement becomes an art. This is a little bit overshooting the, the mark, but uh, it's, it's beautiful if nothing else. So um, that's how I want to end. And thank you very much for participating. Thank you, Camelia. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Awesome. Okay. <laughs>